Okay, so now we're going to go into the how to, the how do we start the process of living minimally. So at the beginning, it can be a little overwhelming. Um, it's a big project for some of us, but we want to start by doing the big purge. So how do we do this? We're going through our home. And we want to um, think about doing this one item at a time. So instead of one room at a time, one item at a time. And why is that? Because when we do one room at a time, we tend to just move things around. We think, okay, um, we're going through this room, we're going through this closet, and this doesn't belong here. So if we're doing our office, for instance, um, we may find a piece of clothing. We go, well, clothes doesn't belong in the office. And instead of actually giving uh, a serious thought whether we need that piece of clothing, we end up just moving it to the bedroom. And then we get to the bedroom and we find things that are for the office and instead of going through it, we just move it back to the office. So you see the problem. We end up just going in this big cycle of moving things around our home. But when we do things one item at a time, it's a little bit different. So for instance, if we're going through the books in our house, we're going to take out all the books from every single room. We're going to go through our entire house and find all of the books and we're going to sit down and we're going to go through them. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a pile for donating, so things that we no longer want but somebody else could use because they're in good shape. We're going to have a pile of trash, so things that we're going to recycle or put in the garbage. And then we're going to have the pile that we're going to keep. And so we do a very quick purge, I call this our speed round, and we're going to go through all of those books and we're going to put them in one of those three piles. Then right away we're going to put that box of things to be donated into the car or out of the house to be um, taken away to be donated. We're going to all right away, all of a sudden, right at the beginning there, take that trash and either put it in the recycling bin or in the trash, and then we are left with just the pile that we are going to keep. And we're going to go through it again. You're going to go through that keep pile, pick up each item and decide whether it truly sparks joy for you. If it is something that you are truly going to need and use on an ongoing basis. And if so, then it gets to stay. If not, then you're going to maybe add it to that donation pile. Um, because obviously if it was good enough for you to keep in that first speed round, then it's good enough for somebody else to use. And as we're doing this, I want you to really think about um, whether each piece of um, each item that you pick up, whether um, it truly is going to um, be useful for you again. And if not, that's okay. It can be useful for somebody else. So think about how you are helping somebody else um, as you are passing things along uh, to them. It is saving them money from purchasing it. Um, maybe you're donating your books to a library or to a local hospital where people are truly in need of these things. Um, so as you're going through your home doing your purge, I want you to think about how you can be helping others as well. It makes it a little bit easier to let go of things. Um, so going back to how we do our quick purge or our big purge, um, we are going through each item of our home. So we've got things like our books, our clothes, our kitchen utensils maybe, our dishes. Um, so going through um, and pick one item at a time. Yes, this is a big project and don't expect um, that you're going to be able to do it in a day. It's not going to happen. It is an ongoing process. Um, maybe give yourself um, a month and every weekend spend one Saturday doing one item and the Sunday doing another item so that you feel like you're making progress every week but it's not completely overwhelming okay once you have gone through your entire home then we're going to set up some rules or rules on how we decide maybe let's go back let's take back a step let's go through the rules on how to decide um, each item whether it is going to stay or not so um, in our home we have a six month rule if a piece of clothing or an item has not been used in six month, months, it goes, regardless um, of whether we think we might use it down the road or not. So six months is great because it sort of gets us through um, a few seasons. Uh, so when we're talking about clothing, it gets us through, you know, our winter and fall season, for instance. Um, so when we're looking at our winter clothes, if we haven't worn it through the last season, then it goes. Okay, so the six month rule. I also want you to think about rainy days. So we all think, oh, you know, I'm gonna save this for a rainy day. Maybe I'll use it one day. Um, if you're going through your items and you find yourself saying that to yourself, that what if, or I'll use this if this situation comes up, get rid of it. Regardless, um, you know, I've never had that experience where I kept something thinking, oh, I might use this one day and actually gone to find it, first of all. Um, and nor have I gotten rid of something and then regretted it. Um, so 
Think about that as you're going through. No more rainy days. No more holding on to things for rainy days. Okay. Um, no more duplicates. So if you find that you have um, multiple um, of the same kitchen gadget, for instance, do you have multiple can openers? Why? You don't need two or three can openers. Choose the one that functions the best or that you find that you're gravitating to more often than not and get rid of the rest. Okay, so no more duplicates. Then the next thing is no more multiples. Now this sounds similar to the no duplicates, but it's a little bit different. So when you say no multiples, think about things like sets of towels. How many um, thousands of towels do you have in your house? Do you have like 10 or 12 towels in your house, but you end up really only using three? Each person has sort of their one that is their favorite one, and then they get washed each each week or every other week. Um, and then we use the same ones again, and we have this pile of towels in our closet. Um, that never get touched. So think about that. Same with sheets. You know, we all have our favorite sheets, but we have multiple sets in the closet. Really, we only need one or two sets of sheets. So in our house, we have two sets, um, one that is on the bed and one that is being washed. And then it gets swapped. So when we take off the dirty sheets, we put the clean ones on and the other ones go in the wash. And we basically just alternate between those two sets. Um, I do know families that really only have one set of sheets for each bed and they get washed and put right back on the bed. Um, so there's no reason to have hundreds and thousands of sheets. Um, so, you know, one or two sets for each bed in the house and that's enough. Okay, so think about that. No more multiples. Okay, special occasion items. So we all have these things in our house, usually dishes or cutlery that we use only for special occasions. Um, that means they really are only getting used like once or twice a year, right? My question for you is why? Why don't we use those items, those special occasion items all the time? Make every day a special occasion, right? We have our sort of day-to-day -day dishes that end up getting all chipped and um, and and not so nice. They, you know, they're not really in great shape anymore, maybe because they're a cheaper set. Um, so why not donate those to somebody else and use your fancy special occasion ones all the time? Um, you know, I understand if you have young children, not wanting them to use really fancy, expensive china, um, but maybe we have our, our children's dishes and then our adult dishes, and that's it, as opposed to having our everyday dishes and our fancy dishes and our Christmas dishes and our children's dishes, right? So instead of four sets maybe we have two so think about that no more special occasion items start making every day special instead okay okay talking about kids we all have things that we are emotionally attached to especially as moms we have these items of our children's that we just can't bear to let go right so instead of having a whole bin of your favorite kids clothing that they are never going to wear again because they are all uh, grown out of it I want you to choose a few maybe two pieces of clothing and you're going to create a shadow box make those special items actually special in your home. So you're going to put them on display in a box. Um, maybe you take photos of some of the other things and make um, a wall, a photo wall, or another, a second uh, shadow box of uh, photos of those items or of pictures of your baby wearing those, uh, wearing those things or their special toy. And we have those couple shadow boxes actually displayed somewhere in our house um, so that we can enjoy them all the time instead of those special items being tucked away in a box in our basement or in a closet that you never actually see. You know, so we're holding on to these things, but we're not actually enjoying them. So think about that. How can you go through anything that is emotional for you, those emotional items, and figure out a way to actually make them special and um, you can enjoy them on a daily basis and then get rid of them, get rid of the rest. Yes, somebody else could really use them um, and feel special and uh, make those items feel special and utilized on a daily basis, okay? The next thing is, as you're going through things, if you find damaged goods, if things are damaged, we talked about chipped plates or chipped uh, dishes. Um, if you find something, um, you know, like a, a kid's um, bike or a piece of sports equipment that is actually broken, there's no need to hold on to it. I know we all have good intentions of fixing things and using them again, but realistically, it probably won't happen if it hasn't happened already. So pass them along, donate them, or throw them out um, and get the damaged goods out of your home. Okay. The next one is expiry dates. So for things like food or makeup or paints in your home, um, look at expiry dates. We don't want to be holding on to things that are actually gone bad, right? That's not good for our health. 
And lastly, um, I want you to look at the big picture. So think about, imagine, or find um, a photo in a magazine or online of how you want your house to look and feel. And then that's where you're going to um, gravitate towards. As you're going through things, think to yourself, if I hold on to this, does it um, add to the big picture of how I want my home to look and feel? Or is it taking me away from that idea and that goal? Okay, so looking at the big picture um, and how you want everything to feel can really help make decisions in the moment. Okay. Okay, now quickly we're going to go into the maintenance. Once we've done this huge purge and we've gone through everything, how do we maintain this? That's the trick, right? So the first thing is to do regular clear outs. Once you have done this huge um, purge, then it's a little bit easier um, twice a year, again every six months, to go through each um, item in your home or even at that point stage once you've done your full purge it's going to be easier to do room by room if you prefer to do it that way and just do a clear out going back to those rules that we just talked about thinking about each of them as we go through then um, having a one in one out rule so um, this works really well for clothing um, so if you're bringing a new tank top into your home for instance then you need to get rid of one okay the same thing with children's toys once we have purged down um, we need to be able to replace items so if they're getting a new book then we need to pick a book to donate to another child okay so that one in one out rule can really help um, having trade buddies is great too. So for instance, for us, um, I have a friend who has a, a child just um, five, six months younger than mine. Um, so it's really easy to pass things on down to her um, and know that it's being donated uh, to somebody who's going to use it. So have those people in your life that you can pass things on to um, or trade with if you have um, children or families that are of similar ages and stages. When it comes to clothing, it's really fun to have um, a party exchange, uh, a clothing exchange party, I should say. So have a night with your girlfriends where you have all gone through your last six months of clothes, taken out what you're going to donate, and then swap out with each other. Um, so again, one in, one out. Yes, remember that rule as you're at that party as well. Um, but that's a really fun way to do it as well. And then at the end of the party, what is left, what nobody has um, decided to take home, everything that is left gets donated, right? Um, explaining to your family about your new um, lifestyle of living minimally is really important um, so that they're not just handing things down or constantly bringing um, presents for your children all the time when you are trying to live minimally and not have a ton of new things coming into your home all the time. And then lastly, and most importantly, think about how you can create experiences for yourself and your family instead of everything being about objects. So especially for for special occasions like birthdays or the holidays, instead of it being an overwhelming amount of presents, think about experiences. Where can you go? Um, things that you can do as a family where you're experiencing or learning about the world rather than um, it being all about um, items and objects coming into your household. Okay, so that is the how-to of living minimally and getting started. If you have questions, please let me know. Um, this is how we live our lives in our house um, and even for myself at work as well. Um, so think about that and let me know if you have questions. I'm here to help. Have a great week.